Hello, friends. On July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human to step on the moon. It was a huge success for all humanity. However, for this to happen, many tests had to be conducted on animals. Watch this episode to learn the bitter truth about what happened to the animals that were sent into space, how it happened, and why it was necessary. How will weightlessness affect a mammal? How will the body react to solar radiation? How to build a rocket that will bring its passengers back home alive? Scientists around the world have tried to answer these questions, but it's not something you can do in theory only. Any hypothesis requires testing, especially when it comes to science. And it's even more important when people's lives are at stake. The truth is, we value the lives of our own kind more than the rest. Thus, animals pave the way for humans in space, and not only in space. Since the 18th century, animals have been used to test out prototypes of flying technology. For example, the launch of 1783, when a sheep, a rooster, and a duck were sent up in a new hot air balloon. The pilots traveled for 3.2 kilometers and landed safely. The title of the first official astronauts rightfully belongs to fruit flies. In 1947, a container of them was launched into space. It traveled 106 miles into the air before parachuting back to Earth undamaged. The fly survived and this gave scientists reason to think that it was possible to survive space travel. Then, larger animals got launched into space. This list includes monkeys, spiders, cockroaches, flies, beetles, ants, wasps, dogs, cats, guinea pigs, mice, fish, frogs, turtles, and even jellyfish. And that's not all. The fact is that each species could give an answer to a specific question. For example, people and worms have the same genes that regulate blood sugar. Thus, sending worms into space helped track the changes in these indicators throughout the entire life cycle. It provides useful information and it's not something that we can do with people as it would be inhumane. Shuttles drifting in space with dead animals on board is no joke. Some of the spaceships have never been found. There were live beings on board and to this day, the capsules are probably floating somewhere in space, having become space coffins for their inhabitants. Although hunger wasn't the only reason why these animals died, they also often crashed on landings or couldn't withstand the stress of takeoff. And even if they did return successfully, that still didn't guarantee them survival. Animals that survived space travel were subject to close examination through autopsies. This happened to the cat Felicette who was sent into space as part of the French space program in October 1963. Electrodes were attached to its head to track its condition in zero gravity. The cat reached an altitude of 100 miles and then landed safely. Two months later, it was killed for brain research. The first animal flights into space were considered to be highly dangerous. Thus, in July 1948, a year after the flies, a V-2 Blossom rocket was launched into space, carrying Elber, a rhesus monkey. That flight ended with the monkey's death. It died of suffocation. This laid the foundation for a tradition of calling all astronaut monkeys Albert. As a result, such undertakings are now known under the code name Project Albert. Along with the first tradition, another one appeared. Each Albert died during the flight. The best result was shown by Albert II, who survived the entire flight, but died on re-entry into the atmosphere. Most of the monkeys were anesthetized until they landed. Various sensors were implanted into the animal's muscles and tendons. They recorded the EMG activity of muscles and movements. They also had electrodes implanted into their brains. More than half of the monkeys that participated in U.S. launches in the 1940s and 1950s died during or shortly after their flights. However, a particularly cynical incident occurred on November 3, 1957, when a dog named Laika 
was launched into space on board the Sputnik 2 spacecraft. They began experimenting with dogs in the Soviet Union back in the early 50s. From the very beginning, they decided to opt for mongrel dogs, which are more compliant and stress-resistant. Before joining the space program, Laika was homeless. She was a mutt roaming the streets of Moscow. The Soviet Union specifically looked for homeless mongrels like Laika. While the Americans were sending monkeys into space, the Soviet people thought it would be easier to work with dogs. There was a whole team working on finding and catching mongrels. In their opinion, the harsh life on the streets made these dogs strong and tough enough to withstand a flight into space. Laika was not the first dog sent into space. Her predecessor, Albina, flew over half of the orbit and returned to Earth alive. Another dog, Mushka, was supposed to test the life support system. Same as Laika, Mushka was also a mongrel, but the trials of the space program were too hard for her. Mushka got so scared during training that she refused to eat. Unlike Albina, Laika did not return to Earth. The engineers did not equip the satellite to safely enter the atmosphere. Everyone knew that Laika wouldn't survive the return trip. Everyone outside the Soviet Union was outraged by Laika's mission. The Daily Mirror ran an article with the headline, The dog will die and we cannot save it. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals urged people to file complaints with the Soviet Embassy. Other states held a minute of silence every day at 11 o'clock in the morning to show their protest. The USSR did not understand the reaction of Western society. Russians love dogs, they said in response. We didn't do it just to be cruel. We did it for the good of humanity. However, Laika was most likely chosen precisely because the mission was so cruel. Some argue that it was supposed to be Albina initially, but they decided to leave her on the ground as a sign of respect. She had already done her job. Laika went into space so that Albina could live. The day before the launch, Doctor of Medical Sciences Vladimir Yazdovsky took Laika home. Over the past months, he'd become the closest thing she had to an owner. Professor Yazdovsky took her home to meet his children. On her last day on Earth, he gave Laika the experience of living as a pet dog with a loving family. I wanted to do something nice for her, says Vladimir Yazdovsky. She had so little time to live. The next morning, Laika was supposed to be in a rocket that was going into space and was never meant to return. Yazdovsky took her to the launch site and the team said goodbye to the dog. After we placed Laika in the rocket and closed the hatch, we kissed her on the nose and wished her a safe journey, says one of the team members. We knew she wouldn't survive the flight. However, Laika's rocket didn't get launched that day. Finally, on November 3, 1957, Laika went into space. As soon as her rocket took off from the Earth and went into space, Laika began to panic. Her heart rate and breathing were three times faster than norm. The frightened little dog was trying to figure out what was happening to her. When the forces of gravity ceased to act, Laika began to calm down. She was the first dog astronaut in the history of the Earth. It was Laika who made the first true space flight and was the first living creature to fly around the Earth. For a long time after the mission, the Soviet Union claimed that Laika survived her first day in space. Scientists said that she was in orbit around the Earth for several days, and then she ate the poisoned food prepared in advance and died peacefully, flying around our planet. The truth was kept hidden until 2002, when one of the scientists, Dmitry Malashenkov, revealed the details of the harsh fate that actually befell Laika. The dog died seven hours after the launch, during her fourth circle around the Earth, in excruciating pain. The temperature control system on the hastily constructed satellite was broken. The temperature in the shuttle kept rising and rising until it reached 40 degrees, creating unbearable conditions. Laika, who barely had time to calm down, began to panic again, but there was no one there to calm her down. The scientist watched as Laika's heart rate began to rise again until her heart finally stopped beating. Five months later, 
Laika and the capsule burned up on their way to Earth. The dog's body burned up right in the atmosphere. And that's all for today, friends. Share your thoughts about today's episodes in the comments below. Like the video and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.